around $16, $17 I got meals for the next maybe three, two, three days that I'll be here in Florence. Eating out every day can be a little costly, can also be a little fattening. Um, so a little bit of both and I have a cold so I know anything that I eat right now will be wasted on the fact that I can't like smell it or taste it that well. Lucky I am at an Airbnb that allows me to have like a kitchen where I can keep things. It's the beauty of it all. It's like 8 o'clock at night. Like whose light is on? Do people even live here? I don't know. You'd think not because there's just no light. I can't even imagine walking up those stairs in this kind of dark. That's scary. This is what buying your tickets at the train station is kind of like. I just don't like waiting in line so much. I bought my tickets online. Needless to say, if you don't buy your train tickets online, then you have to wait in one of those lines. When you purchase a ticket here, you have to validate your ticket before you get on the train. Forget that, they will find you. So I'm looking for train 9445 to Freccia Rosa. 9445. At 5.55, it's going to Napoli something. It seems to be still my train. I'm going to platform 19. Oh. This is exactly like New York City where you're just waiting for your time to like pop up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now I just have to find my Airbnb and the way out. Oh, this is exhilarating. They have a Sephora here and a McDonald's. Wait, I want to check out McDonald's. McDonald's is all the way at the end. Okay, it's kind of an investment. I have to come back when I feel like spending more money. Just kind of like a salad wrap. It's like eight in the world. Super exciting, super thrilling. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm so excited. <laughs> the last time I was here, I was here for like maybe around one or two days. I didn't see that much. I came in through there, it's very dark. You can smell the age in this hallway and the fact that my camera can't pick up much of the light, that means it's pretty dark in here. That's the main light right there. I don't recall there being a light at night. It's just still kind of dark. Okay. So we've got the first bathroom right here. Got your day, of course. Last night I tried to take a shower at around 10.30 and the water, the hot water was not working in either bathrooms. This is the second bathroom. So this is the host and I believe there's someone else living there. This is our dorm. I'm paying roughly around $30 a night for that dorm bed and for the location itself, which is a pretty good location. This kind of goes to show you that in Florence, um, prices can be a little more upscale um, for what you get. So this is like maybe around eight minutes from the train station. They always make such loud sounds. Ooh. Nice. A lot of shopping down this street. Ooh, is this kind of cute or not? This is cute too. Oh my god. Completely getting distracted. Okay, in order to make it to where I need to go, I will go through probably even the worst thing, the market. I think I needed to come here a little earlier. This is an age-old market. These are mushrooms. Fungi is what they're called in Italian, I believe. Tuscany mushrooms. The best. 
can actually smell you can smell the mushrooms from here. I absolutely got sidetracked. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Piazza di San Lorenzo. This area is named after Lorenzo Medici and he was significant in that he was the man who discovered Michelangelo at the early age of 12 years old. I'm still not sure what the difference is between a piazza, plaza, and square. So if anyone wants to inform me a little bit more about that, please do. I am a traveler, but that does not mean that I know everything about a culture, especially when I'm very new and fresh to it. You will just see a lot of souvenir shops lined up along the way. I found this open. Thankfully, I didn't have anything back here. I stuffed my extra undies right there so they'll get a good surprise. This is the symbol of Florence. Now, the artist, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he had to have thought through the angles of this statue. So this is probably the correct angle, but if you notice, when you turn on this end, you'll get a completely different interpretation. In the past, as an artist and someone who was interested in art history, Florence is just kind of like the end all dream actually. I used to really be into painting uh, nudes and uh, just like the anatomical form because I just found beauty in that. And that's what a lot of these artists did. This is the Medici Church Cloisters. A sign of wealth during this period of Renaissance was the ability to commission artwork or images due to literacy was very powerful. The symbol of the Medici family was the orange or circles. You will find those circles or oranges in commissioned artwork. Whenever you see that symbol up there, circles in the architecture, like concurrent circles, that is usually a sign of the Medici family and the fact that they have commissioned or owned uh, parts of artwork or parts of uh, buildings or entire buildings. This is the first window made by Michelangelo. It's the Instagram of windows in Florence. And look at the line. This is the door of paradise. It is not quite the original, but it was made by Michelangelo. Important to note about the Duomo is that all this artwork out here, it's been renovated. It's not the original artwork. When you look at the artwork here compared to the Battisteria, it's there's colors in it. And that's a little bit later in the Renaissance period. Right now, I am in the political center of Florence. You have a fountain of Neptune there as well as a statue of some famous uh, Florentine. Sorry, sorry. And right here you have like this open air museum. Interesting thing to note about being in this political square is that because it belongs to the government, there's a lot of show of brute force and power and violence. So you'll see in this open air museum, a lot of these statues are like of scenes from heroic times. Perseus, who's just killed Medusa. And that's Hercules. All original artworks. Now, you'll find in Florence, there's a lot of statues. They're not all original. They look very impressive, like that David right back there, Michelangelo's David. It's not the real one, it's a copy. And a lot of these are copies because due to like, rain or vandalism or even pollution. They remove the originals and they kind of put out copies of them. This is the Ponte Vecchio area. It's super crowded. Looking out. Interestingly, that bridge was made by Michelangelo. Along the way, you will find a lot of gold shops. Apparently before, there was a lot of fish dealers working here and the smell was really strong. They ended up converting this into like a place where there was more gold, the smell of gold. Although I would recommend going across to one of the other bridges and taking a photo there simply because you get a photo of the actual Ponte Vecchio. Oh my gosh, I recognize the store. I've seen it in like Barcelona. 
this store just generally has cute things. For 25 euro, you can have like this set right here, this cat house. And let's not forget about your cappuccino. Ooh, that was a little scary. That was like the ultimate store for adults who just want to have fun in their daily life. So we're in Italy right now and there's it's kind of like a way of experiencing food, like food experiences. It's very gourmet. Olive? But it looks like anchovies. Whoa. This is like for the serious gourmet. Those who want to have like a very gustarial like experience. Okay, and here we go. A Ferris wheel. Why? Because why not? There's a lot of modes of transportation to get around here in Florence, all for tourists. You've got little go-karts, you've got little pedicab carts, you've got horse and carriage, which I would not recommend. No mistreatment of animals. That's my rule when traveling anywhere. They have a euro store or a one dollar store. You can get this for a euro. These incense burners for a euro. This is your Euro wall. A lot of hardware. Seems like outside of like hardware and some cheap souvenirs and some stuff that you really wouldn't want, like a doorstop. Well, you might if you're a solo traveler. Everything else is like a Euro and higher. Okay. Oh, wow. We've got a bidet here. That's kind of nice, but I don't know how I feel about sharing bidets here. This is in a train station, probably like $1.20 or something like that. When you gotta go, you gotta go. In any other condition, I would be offended to pay one euro for a, for a toilet. Now right outside the Florence train station, you have the city train. But what's cool is under the Florence station, you have a shopping mall. Interestingly, I noticed two guys coming up close behind me. When I whipped open my camera to vlog, they both kind of separated around me and went past. Oh my god. This is this is the bicycle parking lot. I guess you must have to pay somewhere, but you can kind of hold it in this space for I guess for a while if you want. Wait, she's picking her bike right now. 380. Yeah, for our first hour our park. Oh, that's that's not cheap. But it's better than risking it getting stolen out on the streets, chained to something somewhere. They say Italians love a good pair of shoes. Yeah. Those shoes are darn expensive. It's through resourcefulness and viewers like you who keep my channel going. So if you love what I do and want to see me continue creating solo travel videos, support me on Patreon. Jump behind the scenes with others for my latest trip updates and reward perks. Stay tuned for more Italy videos as I take you behind my solo travel adventures. Until then, travel safe, smart, and fun, and may the girl be with you.